My name is Mohamed Rehan uh, from Radio Astronomy Lab, and today uh, I will talk about the Decametric Radio Telescope. Uh, first of all, the Decametric Radio Telescope, as Dr. Elias said, uh, it is one of the uh, ambitious programs and, and uh, projects uh, in the uh, Sharjah Academy for Astronomy and Space Sciences and Technology. Uh, this uh, project uh, is funded by uh, UAA Space Agency, uh, and we started this project uh, a couple of years ago when we uh, built the first array. Uh, it was a, a simple, simple array and the prototype radio telescope. After that, we expanded uh, to, uh, to get what we uh, get right now. Uh, that means we can expand uh, in the in the near future, inshallah, for uh, for the other uh, projects. Um, the outline. I will start with the outline. Um, let's uh, take about the um, the the decametric radio uh, telescope and decametric radio studies um, uh, in the historical uh, view. Uh, first, uh, first. I'm sorry. Uh, and uh, maybe it is a it is a. Yes, automatically play back. Okay. Um, uh, then we will talk about if, uh, some events like uh, uh, solar uh, radio burst, uh, Jupiter uh, uh, radio burst, and uh, the effect of the ionosond. Uh, it is important for anyone uh, who uh, who is interesting in uh, uh, Interested, sorry, in, in, in radio astronomy and in decametric and low frequency uh, radio uh, study, uh, radio astronomy studies, uh, to take a, a good idea in the uh, communication engineering and the wireless engineering and antenna receivers and something uh, related. So, uh, in every uh, lecture and every workshop, we uh, we uh, prepared for the uh, for the for, for the public or for the uh, students. Uh, we try to give uh, an idea about what, what what do we mean with the dipoles, with the antenna, the array, uh, receiver, bandwidth, and, and some of these uh, uh, concepts. Uh, so uh, after that, I will talk about the decametric radio array in SAST. That what we have and what uh, that what we uh, what you can see here. This is the one of the uh, SAST arrays, and I will show you uh, some of our events, some of our observations, uh, according to uh, to our team uh, work uh, during uh, two years before, uh, and the future of the low frequency radio astronomy. So, the decametric radio astronomy it is a part. Of the of the low frequency uh, radio astronomy. Um, uh, about the history, <clears throat> uh, by chance, one of the uh, physicists and uh, electrical engineers who who called uh, Karl Jansky in 1930, um, he he was uh, assigned to investigate the uh, the uh, noise. Uh, this noise uh, produced by uh, unknown source in the sky. So uh, the company of, of, of Bell, uh, Bell uh, Telephone, it, it was a very big uh, company for uh, telecommunication. Uh, they built an array for uh, uh, telephones, uh, wire telephones, the, the, the classical one. Uh, when they uh, built that, uh, that, uh, that array, they noticed that there is a noise, uh, radio noise come from, uh, comes from uh, Certain uh, portion of the sky, so he investigated this uh, this kind of uh, of uh, noise and interference and discovered a very very important discovery. This is the uh, how uh, radio astronomy uh, was born as a, as a as a science as a new science or a new branch of uh, the 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 astronomy and astrophysics. He discovered that there is a um, relationship between the position of our Milky Way, our galaxy, the, the, the Milky Way uh, in the sky, and the, uh, the appearance of, of that uh, interference. So uh, by using uh, uh, this, you can see his, uh, uh, it is a, a little bit complicated uh, array, by the way. I don't know why, why, why he used this, this kind of arrays. 
uh, he built uh, his own array to prove that uh, the electrical, oh sorry, the the uh, the radio uh, interference uh, comes from uh, from the uh, the Milky Way, from the core of the Milky Way, um, uh, exactly between uh, Scorpius and Sagittarius. Uh, it is the, the the hub of our galaxy. So uh, this is the uh, birth of uh, the uh, the radio astronomy. Uh, after that, uh, a lot of studies uh, followed that uh, discovery, and uh, some of uh, these uh, uh, some some of uh, radio earlier radio astronomers built an arrays. Uh, so you, in this uh, picture, you can see. Uh, this is uh, the, the long array, it uh, looks like a cross sign. So uh, for the, the, uh, the it's called uh, uh, north, uh, this is a north-south uh, uh, direction, or arm two. Uh, this is a north-south uh, direction of the array of, of the antenna. So you can see, you can find here the, 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 the array and the arrangement of uh, these antenna, both uh, uh, each of them, each one of them is a, it's called a, a dipole or the half half wave dipole antenna. I, I will describe it later, inshallah. Uh, so this antennas or the, the, this, this array, arm two, it extended south, north or north south. Okay, so this is called a, um, a broadside array as we will describe later. Uh, so this is a broadside array and it has a, a, a beam, it has a, east-west beam. So this array is this array, this one is responsible for this beam. So it can it can receive it's it's, it's gathering the radio signals uh, from this from this region extended to east-west. So the other uh, the other uh, array it's called the collinear array. This one this arm R one uh, it can uh, gathering and squeezing the beaming pattern uh, north south. So the interception area between these these patterns can uh, can be represented here. It is a it is a pencil beam. It was very very small beam by using this array, and they reach to uh, as I remember one arc minute uh, resolution. So that's I think it, it is unbelievable in early uh, um, I think it's in early fifties. Yes. Uh, so this is the uh, historical, quick historical view about the uh, radio astronomy. Uh, the decametric radio uh, waves um, produced by the any accelerating charges uh, uh, in in the magnetic uh, magnetic or strong magnetic field uh, existence. So we have to to we have to apply two conditions. Accelerating charges, this is the first condition. The second one is these charges accelerate uh, uh, in or cr crossing the lines of the mag strong magnetic field. So we have a very, very enormous magnetic field in the sun and Jupiter and the other stars and the pulsars. Most of these stars and, and uh, a lot of uh, rocky planets like the Earth and, and uh, and Mercury also, it has a, a magnetic field. So by accelerating charges in any magnetic field, we can produce a, a, a radio waves in, in different uh, wavelengths. So this is uh, what, what we see here is the, the, uh, the radio burst from the, sorry, from the radio uh, spectro, uh, spectroscope for the solar radio emission. So you can see how the radio uh, emission uh, is, sweeping, is, sweep, is sweeping from high frequencies to low frequencies uh, during the, uh, the uh, solar uh, flares. So the, the, most, the, the most common uh, source of this kind of radio burst that comes from, uh, from the sun uh, it is uh, from the radio burst, and it, there is a, a strong relationship between the the appearance of uh, sunspots, solar cycles, and the um, the, the the existence of uh, or uh, emission of the radio uh, bursts uh, like this. 
Um, uh, another source, another um, source inside our uh, solar system, it is uh, uh, Jupiter, it is a gigantic, gigantic planet. Uh, and the, it used one of these, uh, one of its moons, uh, it's called Io, uh, as a, a trigger or, or to enhance its uh, radio, uh, radio emission. So by uh, Io, it is, it is a volcanic, uh, it is a volcanic moon rot uh, rotating or revolving around Jupiter in very, very close uh, orbit. So uh, the acceleration, the, the, the gravitational acceler and, and acceleration for this moon uh, uh, make it um, a, a volcanic uh, rocky moon. Uh, that, uh, that means this, uh, this uh, moon, Io, uh, produce a lot of uh, charges, electrical charges and, uh, and atoms. And uh, throw it on the on the on, on its on its uh, path or on its uh, track uh, while it's uh, rotating around Jupiter. Jupiter has a very very strong uh, uh, magnetic field. So the two conditions that we 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 talking about before. I'm sorry for that. I think it is automatically uh, uh, sliding uh, the slides. Playing my slides, okay. Um, so this magnetic field um, by crossing uh, the magnetic field discharge by, uh, cross the magnetic uh, field of Jupiter and produce also um, uh, radio waves in the geometric, uh, in the geometric uh, radio band. So we have uh, two types of, of Jupiter IO radio bursts. Uh, one of them called a uh, L burst or L type and S type S burst. Uh, the L burst lasts for. We I will show you uh, these graphs. It lasts for for um, for each 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 uh, each each bulb or each peak. Uh, it lasts for from one to two seconds. And uh, for the uh, L uh, S burst, uh, it lasts um, between a uh, uh, tenth of the second to thirty of the, one over thirty of the second. So uh, that's why we call it short burst. Um, the location of Io, the, the, uh, the apparent location of Io, uh, for example, this, this is, the pencil, this is uh, Jupiter, and we are the observer from, the, from Earth. Uh, this is Jupiter, and this is Io. The position of Io uh, and Jupiter uh, related to the, to the, uh, to the uh, observer on Earth, uh, it is important to uh, to enhance or to make a reception of these radio waves uh, strong and uh, and uh, make it a detectable uh, radiation so this is a uh, that that means we uh, to make a serious uh, observation for uh, jupiter io uh, radio uh, emission we have to know when we uh, make our observations, we can use uh, uh, several uh, softwares. We will see uh, some of them, uh, inshallah, on the next slide. Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, the other uh, player, it is a major player, uh, to be honest, um, the ionosphere. The ionosphere, the ionosphere, it is uh, the upper layer of the atmosphere. That means, um, uh, it is uh, if we, if we uh, travel to, to the moon or go or, or make a space probe or, or uh, any of these uh, spacecrafts, uh, you, this uh, the, the effect of ionosphere will will uh, will cancel. Sorry. Okay. Um, so the ionosphere it is the upper layer of the atmosphere uh, of, the, of the Earth atmosphere uh, due to the uh, high intensity of the uh, ultraviolet radiation that comes from the sun and x-ray, uh, the, the atoms of the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the atoms on the ionosphere level uh, produce uh, uh, ions. So these ions act like a metal shield covering the earth. Uh, of course, uh, we, we can expect that uh, uh, in daytime, in the daytime, the uh, thickness and density of the ionosphere will be higher than the nighttime. So that's why 
uh, usually in, in a difference. This is very, very, very um, a long story. Uh, a difference from country to country, from latitude to latitude, from season to season, uh, uh, which time on the day we, uh, uh, we, we, we make our observation. So a difference, okay? It's not, but we can, we can uh, say in, uh, in, in general, uh, between um, 18, sorry, below 18 megahertz, the ion sphere will be very, very active. So it will reflect all the waves, all radio waves that comes uh, that come from 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 uh, celestial uh, source uh, and prevent it to to reach to the earth surface so we cannot in general we cannot uh, receive the radio astronomy uh, sorry the radio uh, waves uh, below this frequency it is a critical frequency it is from 15 to 18 some some sources uh, uh, said uh, this is a 15 or, or 15 megahertz, okay? Above 18, the atmosphere, uh, again, uh, sorry, the ionosphere, again, in general, not all the time, uh, it, uh, it will be uh, transparent uh, for the uh, radio frequencies above 18 uh, megahertz. So uh, 18 megahertz freq uh, radio frequencies and above, can easily penetrate the, the ionosphere and reach to Earth's surface. That's why we focus on the decametric, again, the decametric radio band. Uh, that means the Sun, Jupiter, the Milky Way, most of the, of the, of the uh, celestial radio sources can produce, or sorry, it already produces, <clears throat> produce, uh, uh, multiple uh, wave wave in, in multiple wavelength uh, so uh, but we can receive we cannot receive the frequencies uh, below that uh, that critical frequency due to the existence of the ionosphere uh, that's why we we concentrate on the decametric in our uh, in our uh, research in this project so we we call this this <coughs> I'm sorry we call this band uh, as a, a decametric. Uh, why? Because if you if you look to the to the sorry, if you look to the scale here here, look to the to, to the scale, uh, you can see the, the 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 whole radio bands from VLF very low frequencies up to extremely high frequencies EHF. Uh, at the middle, we can see the HF and VHF, the high frequencies and very, very high frequencies. So this, this band, look at the, the wavelength, the equivalent wavelength to these frequencies. It is around 10 meters, five meters, um, 15 meters, uh, 14, 20 meters. This band called a decametric. It refers to, to tens, multiple of tens. There is a, another, another uh, bands, uh, uh, below below this one, this is called hectometric radio uh, band and kilometric. This look at this at, at this um, wavelength. It is in kilometers, kil kilometric wave uh, band, and so on. And here is a, a decimetric, centimetric, millimetric. So this is the decametric. Uh, that's why we call this project as a decametric radio telescope. So this is our useful uh, radio band. Uh, because it is, it has a <clears throat> the most of the celestial, uh, the 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 uh, interesting celestial sources like the Sun, Jupiter, uh, produce a strong or high intensity radiation in this frequency. This is the, the, the reason number one. Reason number two. Oh, sorry, there are three reasons. Okay, <clears throat> uh, reason number two, this frequency can easily penetrate the ionosphere and can, uh, it, it, is, it is easy to, to, to receive it uh, on Earth. Uh, number three, it is easy, again, uh, relative easy, okay, um, to build a, a radio telescope for, for this frequency. It is very difficult to, 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 to build a raise in the kilometric wave, wave, wave bands. So it needs uh, kilometers of uh, wires and uh, it, it is hard to, to achieve that. But uh, this kind of, oh, sorry, this uh, range of frequencies is very, very, <clears throat> very optimum for our studies. Okay, um, some technical uh, aspects here. Um, the common types of half-wave dipoles, 
what what is the half wave dipole uh, if we have a radio wave okay let's say for 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 our our uh, our pair bus it is a 15 meter uh, 15 meters uh, wavelength um, uh, if you divide this um, this wavelength 15 meter to 2 by 2 okay you will get around 7.4 or 7.5 exactly it is not 15 meters exactly okay so this is called the half wavelength to build uh, a good uh, reception um, uh, to build a, a good uh, a good antenna or or the resonance antenna for this frequency you have to make the antenna uh, equal or very very close to the half wave of uh, half wave uh, half of your wavelength uh, for the frequency. So if you, if you are working on on let's say uh, 30 30 megahertz, okay, so it is equivalent to 10 meters uh, wavelength. So you have to build or to to, to use a, a cover of wire like this one uh, in five meters. And uh, <clears throat> build your your array according this limitation. So there are a, a, a couple of, of, of kind of uh, sorts of uh, of, uh, of arrays. Um, sorry, of antennas. Um, this one simple dipole. We use this one because it is it has uh, many advantages uh, like uh, high selectivity, not sensitivity, selectivity. So it, if if you cut it uh, carefully at the same wave, uh, half wavelength of, of your uh, working frequency, that means you will reject most of unwanted frequencies, the other frequencies, higher or lower frequencies. So it is, it's a, uh, it, uh, this is advantage and disadvantage for, for some applications, it is, um, uh, it is uh, important uh, and desirable to, to, to build an uh, array that um, it, it has a wide, uh, wide, wide band, wide uh, bandwidth. So, but it, it has a, a narrow one band, uh, bandwidth, by the way. Um, we can make it on many designs like this one, inverted V. You can change the, the, the impedance and uh, it has a lower directivity. Uh, this is a multi-band uh, multi uh, inverted V antenna. So, so you can receive um, many bands uh, by, by, by a single, uh, single dipole. Uh, and uh, here uh, we can see the folded one. It is a wide band also. So there are many. It is just a common examples for the antennas that uh, that uh, are used for uh, decametric radio uh, arrays. So now, okay, we built a, a beautiful uh, antenna. And uh, what else? We have to for a serious uh, and a professional. Uh, radio astronomy studies. You have to increase your directivity, your selectivity, and your sensitivity, not your the, the antenna itself. Okay. So your antenna, your network, your your array should be very sensitive, but in not in any direction. It is it is uh, make no sense if you if you build an antenna or or array, it can uh, collect uh, radio noise from all directions. So you have to build an, an, an array of antenna. Uh, it has a, a, a high sensitivity on certain direction. This is, this is what, 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 what we uh, do mean about the selectivity. So it's selective uh, only, uh, an, an, uh, sorry, directivity. So it, it only, uh, uh, it's restricted in only a small uh, portion of the sky, a very, very narrow uh, band of the sky, or, or narrow, sorry, a narrow beam. Uh, it looks like uh, when you use a flashlight, if you use a flashlight uh, someday, uh, you notice that there is a, a mirror and uh, and and lens uh, in front of the of of, of the of the lamp. So that. These these uh, tools uh, uh, work uh, to uh, to to enhance the the beam itself, so make it narrow. So it is important to make your beam very narrow 
for the, for the uh, radio astronomy uh, studies. Uh, by using antenna also, you, you can uh, uh, control the direction of the beam also. You can control the direction of the, the part of the sky that you are interested in. So if you, if you would like to, to observe something in, in the southern, uh, southern uh, 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 elevation or, or low elevation, so you can uh, low uh, your, uh, your, your beam. Uh, by using a phasing cable and and the, the uh, and reflectors and you you can can do that in many in many uh, ways so this is the importance of using array so building a single uh, antenna uh, it is uh, just for uh, amateur uh, uh, amateurs uh, purposes or for most amateur purposes yes it is enough to build one one antenna and hearing the 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 interference of uh, of the solar flares and uh, Jupiter and some of the interesting uh, uh, sources. But for a professional, you have to build an array and you can enhance your reception and your uh, sensitivity of, of this system by using a metal grid, by using directors, uh, a lot of uh, designs that uh, you can apply to, to achieve your goals. So um, let's talk about now, uh, our project, the SAS Decometric Radio Arrays. Uh, we have two uh, arrays in our uh, radio lab. The, this is the, uh, the, this one, the large one, it is a dual array and the, the smaller one or slimmer one, it's called a single, uh, single uh, radio uh, array uh, or a single decometric array. So uh, you can see, this is the, the, the our backyard uh, uh, instrument uh, and uh, you can see here the cab, the cabin. Inside this cabin, there is a uh, computers, receivers, filters, all all uh, uh, equipments that uh, uh, important or it 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 take uh, it take uh, uh, the signals uh, from the from these antennas uh, uh, are fitted here in, inside this cabin, and we can control this uh, these instruments uh, remotely from our labs. Um, this is a, a schematic uh, uh, diagram or, or illustration for the both of these uh, arrays. So this is the single array. This single array is called uh, collinear. Why collinear? Because we, you, when you when you put this, uh, assume this this is your uh, your dipole antenna. Okay, it is a dipole antenna. If you put another dipole like this side by side, so that means uh, you have a collinear array, so this is a collinear array. Uh, it will uh, narrow the the beam width of uh, of, of your uh, of your system uh, in in the direction north west. Okay, usually we we put this this one uh, this direction is east, and here is west. Okay, we can see uh, for 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 in SAST there are uh, four elements signal, sorry single. Um, uh, collinear array uh, here uh, combined uh, on each other and uh, get a, uh, oh, sorry, uh, they are connected with, with one uh, coax cable, transmission line coax cable that uh, reached to the, sorry, that connected with directly with the, with the, uh, with the receiver inside the, the cabin. And here is the, the four element, the other array, the large one. Uh, it is a uh, four element, but a dual, dual broadside. What's what's that? What's the broadside? Broadside. Uh, if you remember the the, the tall uh, the tall array, cross mill array that that I showed you before uh, before uh, at the beginning of this presentation, uh, you see. You, you, I think you noticed that um, there is a again. I let me show you. This is important. Yes, this one. Yeah. Look at this. Uh, this is a this is east west. Okay, so this is called a collinear, and this is a broadside. If you put two dipoles here, uh, north south, okay, like this, that that means you 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 are using uh, uh, dual. Uh, sorry, uh, you, are, you are using a, um, a broadside broadside uh, array design. So this is a broadside array, four of four elements, broadside array, dual, dual, that means we have two parts only, okay? 
uh, stack to each other uh, to give more uh, 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 more uh, sensitivity, okay, with and by uh, keeping the beam width as it is, because if we narrow the beaming width a lot, we will lose uh, the, the signal from uh, many targets, especially from Jupiter. So that means uh, you are uh, narrowing your, in, 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 some, in some applications, you have to keep uh, your beam a little bit wide to uh, give a chance for the celestial object to passing through your beam. So it, it is not practical to make it narrow, narrow, narrow uh, without, uh, without any uh, way, <clears throat> without having uh, the, the, the chance or the technology to track or to uh, steering your beam. We, 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 we steered our beam, but I will show you how. Okay, the, uh, the, parameter of, uh, the parameters of, uh, of, uh, of uh, dual array, this is a dual array, it is a top view. Uh, again, it is a top view uh, for, uh, for our uh, one unit of the dual array. So we can see the parameters here. Uh, this is, uh, if, you, if you calculate the, the, the distance between this step to the other one, uh, you will discover it is around seven point something meters, around 7.1 uh, meters. Uh, that means the wavelength is should be the double the this uh, this value. So we are working on uh, 15. Oh, sorry, 14 point something uh, wavelength. Uh, so this is what what do we mean uh, about the the half wave uh, dipole? So this. Uh, this uh, this dipole uh, connected with the coax cable is a uh, 75 ohms, uh, and uh, the other one, the no, uh, sorry, this is the south, this is the north one. Okay, um, uh, connected with the the uh, uh, also with the, the coax cable, one lambda coax cable. Uh, uh, both of these cables are combined to each other to give us one output. This output could be for receiver, if you built an array for, for two or only two element, uh, sorry, for only one element, this is called one element or one, uh, one bay, this one, okay? Uh, or uh, you, can you can connect this one, not to receiver, not for the, the, the combiner that uh, connected with other, uh, with the other, uh, the other elements, if you have a multi elements, uh, array. So uh, our working frequency, it is a 20.1 megahertz. So it is a mid-range in the decametric radio band. Uh, and uh, we are uh, using, um, uh, we are using a, a, a phasing cable here. Where's the phasing cable? There, is, there are no phasing cable. What do we mean about the phasing cable or the phasing itself? Look for the, this, this uh, picture here on, on the left. Um, uh, if you build an array of antennas and make a delay between the signal received or transmitted, all the same, the same in, in, in radio engineering, all the same. If you, if you design an array to, to, to transmit uh, radio waves or to receive, you have to use the same configurations. So uh, if you would like to, 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 to steering your beam, uh, left, right, up, down, in any direction, you have to make a delay between the, the wave or the signal uh, for each stage or each element of your, of your, uh, of your array. So uh, you have to apply a, a, what we call the phi. A phi it is a phasing angle between, between the waves. By, by changing this, uh, this, uh, this angle or make this delay between each element, uh, uh, between every every two two elements story, uh, that means you can changing your your angle of of, uh, of uh, you can change the the, the beams angle. Uh, so this is called the phasing. Uh, for us, for our our project, we uh, we used since Jupiter it is in low elevation. It is actually it is in, in its lowest elevation uh, in this decade. <clears throat> Is around uh, uh, 47 degrees uh, south. 
so that means we have to delay the signal that receive the, sorry, we have to delay the signal received by the front element. Where's the front element? If you look for, for south, this is the south direction. This is the front element, okay? We have to delay this signal and give, give uh, this is this very small portion of time to, uh, to, 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 the, to, the, uh, to the rare element to receive this, the same signal. So we put or add extra cable here, but not in extra length, not in extra, um, uh, uh, not, not any length uh, should, should, should be. We have to calculate how, how, how much time we have to delay this signal. So we can use some equations. We have, uh, you, can, you can check it online, uh, some uh, of the equations that uh, calculates uh, the phasing cable for each angle of, 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 of beam. So by our, our, our catalog and our uh, user's manuals for, for this system, uh, we add a phasing cable that make a delay in 135 degrees in, uh, between the rear and front signals. So uh, this is the, uh, in, uh, in general, uh, as a, uh, this is a quick look for, for our, uh, our system. The, uh, the, any radio telescope uh, consists of all the parts, all, all the uh, components uh, of any radio system. So it is a radio system. So by using antenna itself, you cannot do anything. You have to uh, uh, transfer the, the signal from uh, the antenna to, uh, to uh, uh, we can, uh, you can uh, uh, transfer the, uh, the, uh, the signal from uh, the antenna or the array to receiver by using cables. So also uh, not any kind of uh, cables uh, that uh, can be used for, for this purpose. You have to use a specified uh, uh, kind of uh, cables. So uh, also we have to put the receiver, the receiver uh, that can detect these waves and convert it to sound, convert it to digital signals uh, uh, that uh, may uh, received or uh, decoded in, uh, in, uh, in the computer or any software. So this is a Jovi's uh, receiver. Uh, it is a simple one. Uh, the working frequency is 20.1, but you can change, you can make a fine tuning for, for this frequency uh, from uh, 19.8 to 20 point, uh, around 20.2. So uh, this is a, uh, this, this, um, this is the radio input or the coax input here. And you can see this, this, this the, the circle, the tuning circle. Uh, this is the, the, also the tuning circle. Here is the uh, audio amplifier circuit. Uh, and uh, this is the quartz crystal that adapts, adapts the frequency to 20.1 uh, megahertz. Uh, and uh, this is the local oscillator. This is our, our receivers. So our receivers have, this, uh, have this, uh, this component inside it. And we have two receivers, one for uh, the uh, single um, uh, decametric array and the other one for the dual uh, decametric array. Um, as I said before, um, the, uh, we have to reduce the time for studying the radio uh, uh, radio uh, bursts or radio emission from from uh, Jupiter. Uh, for the sun, you cannot predict the time of the solar uh, of the solar bursts. It is there is it is a, uh, strongly corresponds to the number of sunspots, but you cannot exactly uh, uh, predict the time of the uh, solar of, of the, the solar flare or the uh, solar radio uh, bursts. Uh, but for Jupiter, there is a, a lot of um, softwares that can uh, tell you when uh, you have a high probability to receive something from uh, Jupiter, you can use the uh, Jupiter Pro uh, uh, 
uh, the, the, this this software uh, we use it for uh, for uh, and designed for uh, for Jovi's uh, receivers or Jovi's listeners uh, by NASA. And uh, also, you can if if you are uh, if you'd like to to make uh, <coughs> your own calculations. Uh, so it is it is a little bit uh, wasting. It's a kind of wasting the time, but but it is important to know how this software uh, works. Uh, so uh, you can use also Stellarium by determine, but, but before you do anything, you have to uh, enter your exact location, location of the of the antenna, and the time and the local time, and you have to to, to make uh, all of these. Uh, sorry, input all of these parameters before you start any software. This applied for any 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 astronomical software, by the way. Um, so uh, you can determine the angle between Jupiter and Io, and uh, it, and uh, you can make a table for the uh, the time uh, that we have a high probability to receive signals uh, from uh, from uh, Jupiter Io system. Uh, also, the monitoring of data. Um, I, this is the the, the computer uh, inside the cabin. Uh, one of these uh, computers, uh, so uh, it is connected with uh, with one receiver. Each computer connected with one receiver, and uh, we use uh, uh, it's called um, uh, Skyvibe uh, Two uh, software. Uh, this software can uh, uh, plotting the diagram. Oh, sorry, can plotting the, the 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 curve of the radio of the uh, radio uh, signal that received from receiver. Uh, and by analyzing this uh, this signal, we can we can detect the uh, the solar uh, and Jovian radio uh, emission. Um, uh, this is the control button of the software, and uh, uh, we can uh, we can monitor this uh, this computer uh, in our labs uh, remotely. So no need to go for the cabin every time uh, to do uh, to do observations. Uh, we go only for uh, checking and maintenance. Um, and uh, here is an example of the uh, of our our uh, results uh, we published uh, in uh, 2020. Um, this is an example of the solar radio emission in April 2020. So you can see the fin, uh, fin uh, shark fin shape. Okay, so this is like a, a fin. Okay, uh, or, or inverted V. Uh, this is a, a characteristic um, uh, curve uh, for for the for the uh, uh, solar emission. So most of the solar emission uh, looks like uh, looks like look like this curve. Okay, and this one also. Uh, it was in September, and it was in October. This one is in October. A little bit change in its, its shape, but the same principle. So. In the, we are lucky because the beginning of 2020, uh, it was uh, the beginning of the uh, new solar cycle. It is a cycle 25. Uh, so this, uh, after uh, around two years of, of quiet, sorry, after two years of quiet sun. So uh, we, we are waiting the beginning of the cycle 25 to see the results to, to see some 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 action from the from the from the sun, uh, and to do uh, our uh, research. So uh, fortunately, the the sun started its its twenty uh, fifth uh, cycle uh, in uh, in early twenty twenty, and we are uh, the the cycle is uh, going on uh, in twenty twenty one, and it will reach its uh, maximum. Uh, after uh, six years, around six years, it is not exactly, uh, let's say 2026, 20, uh, inshallah. Uh, the Jovian radio emission, also, we have a, a couple of observations for the radio uh, observations, uh, for the Jovian radio observations. Uh, this is an example for the S burst here. It is a look at the, 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 the spike. It is very, very narrow and short, uh, plus for a uh, Tenth of the second in, in, in average, um, uh, and uh, look for the, the the second or the uh, the the other uh, 
plotting here of care, uh, you can see the the long uh, the long uh, burst how how, how it's, it start uh, how the, the the burst start. Look at the background. The background is uh, is rising also. Okay, but. Each uh, each each one of these spikes lasts from um, half half a second to two second one and half a second and so by by experience just when you, when you look to, to this curve you can uh, know what uh, what uh, radio emission that you you have uh, of course we investigated these uh, these uh, radio uh, emission uh, and this radio events. Uh, by uh, by using the sound file, so the system itself can recording uh, or can record um, uh, the sound file of of these uh, received uh, waves. So that means uh, uh, we can know if this this curve refers to the actual uh, celestial radio emission or the just uh, it, um, a ground uh, interference ground. Uh, uh, radio noise, so it is. It is then not easy, as as I as I uh, described here. But uh, our team, uh, alhamdulillah, uh, they are doing well. Uh, okay. Finally, the uh, the future of the of the low frequency radio astronomy. Uh, a lot of uh, people, let's say, not scientists. A lot of people think that uh, if you would like to uh, to to study uh, or to, to make a, uh, a radio astronomy uh, research, uh, you have uh, to build uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, dishes, large dishes, uh, small dishes, uh, in, in many di diameters. And the dishes is very important, yes. The dishes, building the, the radio telescope in the dishes design is very important, but in the higher frequencies, not in this frequency. This frequency, if you if you build, if you'd like to build a, a dish to detect a, a radio wave in order of 15 meters, like what 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 we, what we are doing at the decametric radio scope, try to calculate how much or sorry, um, the the try to calculate the diameter of the dish that you need to to to, to receive this kind of uh, of wavelengths. So this wavelength will be 15 to, to distinguish between the targets or, or the radio sources. You have to build it in uh, hundreds of meters or one kilometer in diameter to get good results. So in engineering uh, perspective, you cannot, you cannot build a structure uh, in this in this uh, in this uh, diameter i think uh, one of the uh, of the, or the largest dish in china is collapsed a uh, couple of two months or before two months or uh, this year so no sorry in 2020 um so uh, the alternative plan is to keep using these low frequency elements, the antenna, the dipoles, but build an, a large, very, very large array of them, like what we have, what, what they have in, 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 in Europe. So uh, in, in, in the Europe continent, uh, most of the uh, Europe countries uh, uh, accomplished this, uh, this uh, large project, it's called a low far, low far, low far refers to low frequency uh, uh, array. Uh, so the, this low frequency uh, large array, it is a, uh, it is a, it is a, it, by using the frequencies in decametric or a little bit higher or decimetric or metric, uh, you can mapping the sky. So look for example for this beautiful mapping in the contour, in the contour lines for this galaxy. This galaxy this is the optical picture, and here is the the radio radio uh, radio map. For the for this uh, galaxy, so uh, a lot of applications, a lot of uh, uh, targets and 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 objects, radio objects in the sky needs these frequencies. When you when you are talking about the 
uh, UHF and, and below frequencies, you need to build an array uh, of the uh, uh, low frequency radio uh, telescope. Uh, look at this, for example, this is the, the last slide. Um, so this array of, uh, they, they call these, these, these things um, uh, spiders, because I'm sorry, because they are, uh, looks like spiders. They're really, it is very small uh, by using the, the up, uh, sorry, the lower uh, UHF 40, uh, 40 uh, 408 megahertz. Uh, so it is small, the size, okay? You can calculate the, the length by using the, the frequency. Just divide the speed of light on the frequency. You can find the wavelength and you can divide it by two. Anyway, so, uh, and they, 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 they use, uh, also, they use a reflecting red here to increase its uh, its uh, uh, sensitivity on, on top direction. So uh, this is one of the of these. Uh, I think it is in Australia, and uh, this is one of the map for our beautiful galaxy, uh, the Milky Way, by using this frequency, forty point uh, sorry, uh, four four hundred eight megahertz. So uh, this is. Uh, um, a brief of our uh, our research uh, in uh, in decametric radio uh, telescope. Uh, uh, so uh, I think uh, thank you. If you have any question, uh, you can ask. So, Doctor Elias, uh, we have a lot thank of you. questions. <laughs> thank you, Mohammed. Thank you, Mohammed, for this uh, nice. Lecture, but uh, what we have as uh, the decametric radio telescopes or the two arrays that make this observatory. Please, uh, any any question from the audience? Please. Uh, one question, Doctor Elias, uh, please. Please, Marwan, go ahead. Alaikum, yes. Uh, thank you, Mohammed, for the wonderful lecture. Uh, my question is about uh, the Jovian uh, IO, uh, the decometric. Uh, yes. Received. So I'm not sure if you show, if you have shown any, uh, if you showed any uh, results during the, the lecture. Uh, if, if not, have you have you received anything? Do you have any? Uh, yes, for Jovian. Yes. So yes, for Jovian. For Jovian. Uh, one Jovian of the very results. important things in radio, especially in the decametric, you know. So, uh, and uh, this is uh, b b before you answer. I just would like to highlight on this one uh, as one of the methods, very important methods, in decametric uh, uh, radio methods that uh, in the future will be used in the future to detect exomoons. Why? Because uh, moons, as you see, as you know, uh, uh, the uh, IO actually because of its motion around uh, rotation around uh, Jupiter. So that would actually cause some uh, change and destroy or uh, change the, the, the uh, the radio, decometric radio from, from Jupiter. So that's one of the signs that a, a, a moon is there. So uh, I believe in the soon future, that will be a very important method to discover exomoons. Uh, I don't talk about exoplanets, now we know exoplanets, you talk about exomoons. So have you received anything? What, what the searches you have applied for the Jovian IO uh, moon? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Marwan, for this uh, question. Um, uh, actually, the, 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 the radiation, the, the, uh, the radio uh, waves that, uh, that we received from, uh, from Jupiter and it's, it's, it's uh, the influence in, in, between the Jupiter and, and, uh, and its uh, the closest uh, moon, Io. Uh, the intensity of this radiation is very, very low. So. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, that means if, if you if you if you look to to, to if you see the the the, the antenna, it's called the we measure the uh, 
the amplitude of uh, of uh, of of the of uh, radio signal in in uh, in terms of temperature uh, degrees uh, kilo kelvin. So if you if you uh, notice that the temperature degrees the the, the difference in, in temperature degrees for the uh, for for the Jovian is very low compared with the solar one. So to the, um, uh, radio bursts from the exomoons um, around the exoplanets. So I think this is very, very um, tricky. Uh, why? Uh, there are uh, a lot of challenges. Uh, first of all, of them, the, the, the distance. Uh, the second one, uh, the direction. To build the, this array, you have to see like what the telescope that uh, detect the, the, the exoplanets see. You have to see at the same same narrow band, same uh, beam. Sorry, narrow beam. Resolution, okay. you mean? Yes, the resolution, the aperture. Um, so you can you, you you cannot do that. Uh, add to, to to them all the uh, solar. Uh, so yeah, the solar uh, radio. Uh, uh, or this, uh, the, 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 the activity of the sun uh, in terms of uh, radio emission and, uh, and radio uh, burst will uh, wash or must uh, will wash away all of these uh, small, uh, let's say, uh, smooth uh, vibrance on, 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 the, on, the, on the spectrum. So imagine that uh, you, uh, you are in, in, uh, in, a, in, in a party of, uh, let's say, heavy metal uh, rock band, Okay, and you try to listen to the um, to the breeze of you cannot you cannot distinguish the, the, the loud uh, sound will will mask will this uh, this uh, this very very uh, tiny uh, uh, whispers. So you cannot you cannot do that. I think in in, in our in our uh, uh, on the on Earth on our our location on Earth. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I did really. I to, to be honest, I didn't read anything about if you can use the decametric radio band, okay, to study the 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 the, the exomoons. I, I didn't read anything about that. But I think when I when I when I detected uh, from, uh, from Jupiter, it was it was, it was very very um, low uh, intensity. It has a low intensity signal. There is a plan with the uh, LOFAR for the Scandinavian countries to do this kind of observation, but this is uh, very, very tricky because, as you said, Mohammed, so, uh, so the beam and the, the signal, so uh, hopefully it will be successful. Um, one last question, uh, Mohammed, it is on the chat. Uh, Wafa is asking, could you please explain the meaning of the colors of the radio map of the Milky Way in the last slide? The last, the last slide you show that this one. colors, not this one, the last one. Mm -hmm. The last slide. Yes, this one. Yes. Can you explain the colors? She said. Yes, the, the colors, the colors refers to the intensity of the radio. So there is no colors. Uh, radio telescopes, I'm oh, sorry, radio telescope can see in one color. It is it is not a color. Okay, we color this uh, this signals. Uh, to to uh, we use colors to indicate the intensity of the radio waves uh, that we receive. So uh, the if you if you look here, uh, first of all, this map it is um uh, it is a whole sky map. So the projection they they, they, they use it is a uh, equatorial uh, projection. So that that's why you can see the map is collapsed like this. This line. This line present, presents the, the Milky Way. And here, the red one, it has a very, uh, or the, 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 the most or the highest uh, intensity of the radio uh, waves. So this is the, the, the heart of our Milky Way galaxy. Uh, it is uh, between uh, Sagittarius and Scorpius. Uh, and you can see here uh, some of these, uh, of these uh, also red, uh, red, uh, Red objects like this. I think this is a Cassiopeia. Uh, I think that I, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, and uh, you can't. So to know, or instead of drawing the map like this in contour, in contour, okay, to show to to show it or to to make it easy to understand and to imagine, you can use uh, instead of these numbers, 
contour lines, you can use the colors. You can color it like a, like a geographical map. You can see the mountains uh, colored in brown and uh, plains colored in uh, uh, whatever, uh, um, green and, uh, and like this. So this is uh, the intensity of the radio wave in this, in this frequency, 408. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mohammed. Uh, just to add, uh, for any observation outside the optical window, gamma, X-ray, UV, infrared, radio, uh, we use force columns. This is a force core image, just as Mohammed said, to represent uh, the strength of the signal, the intensity of the signal. Uh, usually, it all depends upon the observer. Sometimes uh, some people use uh, red for intense, and uh, they may use blue, whatever. It all depends. That's why whenever you have a force color image, you need to say to the people, what do the colors represent? Okay, thank you very much, Mohammed. Thank you for the audience. We appreciate your uh, being with us uh, in this uh, bi-weekly lecture. And uh, for next month, we have also a heavy schedule and hopefully we're going to advertise for it very, very, very soon. Again, thank you, Mohammed. Thank you for thank the you. audience. Next time, inshallah. Inshallah, thank you. Thank you. Allah Afiki. Yes. I'm not to give